Hello everyone, I'm Adam with Demiplane. Thank you for joining me for this week's development update and community Q&A session. We've got some fun stuff to dive into as a reminder what we're doing here today. We're gonna to talk about all of the latest and greatest updates going on here at Demiplane. We are working in uh, so many places now. It is so exciting. When we started going down the path of providing digital tool set support with Demiplane. Uh, one of the most exciting possibilities of that of, is, you know, hey, you know, we wanna make some high quality digital tools um, and we want to do it for, you know, Pathfinder and we want to do it for, uh, you know, great games like Avatar. And then we just kept thinking like, what if we did it for, what if we did it for, what if we did it for, you know, and we just kept going down the list and we're starting to see um, that, um, you know, that that is a, a, a dream that is going to be a reality as we continue down this road. And, uh, you know, as we are working on the third and fourth uh, digital tool sets to include character tools right now, uh, very exciting time for the company uh, behind the scenes. There's, uh, there's a lot of activity. So people are working really, really hard, uh, but, uh, but, but, you know, there, there's something really, truly fun in the air about uh, being able to work on such great games, these great games that we have been playing for so long. So uh, lots of excitement. We'll talk about what is going on, what we're currently working on, or what maybe has gone live in the last week or so since I've talked to you last. And then we'll talk about the short-term roadmap, uh, just literally who's in the uh, you know batter's circle, the on-deck circle before they go into the batter's box uh, after the stuff that we're currently working on is now cleared out. Uh, today, we're also going to be giving away a Pathfinder Lost Omens bundle. This is all the entirety of the Lost Omens content on Pathfinder Nexus. This is a ton of content. And so uh, pay attention to the prompts in chat on how to potentially win that and good luck. And as always, you can ask me anything, and I do mean anything. Um, I answer almost everything that I see come through. Um, and all you have to do to make that happen is preface with the word question and uh, in Twitch chat, and then follow that by the question itself. And our magical demibot, I see that we already have a question coming in and it's one of my favorite questions. So um, feel free to go ahead and start asking those questions now and I'll get to as many as I have time for at the end of the stream. All right, jumping in, latest updates for Pathfinder Nexus. So we are working on the next installment of Sky King's Tomb. And we are also uh, very excited to be working on uh, our first um, you know, Pathfinder Society uh, scenario. Um, and we've got, uh, you know, kind of the, the introduction to the year of unfettered exploration, as well as the first scenario that is coming out. I believe this is next week. Um, somebody might uh, want to check me on that, but I believe that it, it is next week that that is coming out and uh, very excited about that. This is just a first step when it comes to Pathfinder Society. We've heard, um, you know, the request and we've seen a great deal of demand out there from the community that you want the scenarios, uh, you want, want those available on Nexus. Uh, we are going to continue as we uh, dive deeper into Pathfinder Society mm -hmm. to get into things like uh, character validation to make sure that all of the society rules are being followed when you create your, and, and uh, manage and track your characters. Um, so that is not coming as part of um, you know, next week, but that is something that's on the, the short-term roadmap for us. Uh, but we are going to start uh, putting the Pathfinder Society content uh, and making it available with this new uh, year of, uh, of Pathfinder Society played with unfettered exploration. Uh, if you missed it last week, custom skill support 
is uh, or uh, custom lore skill support and custom skill support it is in place now on uh, the character uh, builder and the character sheet. And uh, if you're trying to set up, uh, you know, custom lore skills, you will be able to use the, uh, select those through the normal course of building your character. And then you just need to go to the character sheet to define what those um, those skills are. And um, incoming, we've uh, th this week's release, we believe it's probably today, but if it's not today, it will be in the next day or two. Um, we are making spellbook access available uh, right now. Um, you know, honestly, this is uh, when we're working on a thousand things, this is one of the things that uh, we, we look at uh, the feedback and we're like, oh, yeah, like we completely meant to do that. And I don't know why we're not doing that yet. But um, but the spell book has kind of been uh, hidden under, uh, you know, some class features for the wizard. And uh, it was a little bit uh, difficult to get to. But now um, with this new release, if you have a spell book, you'll be able to get right to it directly from that spell section. Uh, uh, we have some feet and skill fixes uh, in as uh, we continue to work on some of the bigger things behind the scenes. And one of those things is the core remaster updates. So um, as those updates are happening, we are going to, um, uh, you know, uh, continue to work through all of those and be ready to go when November hits and when this content comes out. On the Avatar City front, uh, Avatar City, that's funny. Um, that's uh, you know that might be what the what they end up calling uh, you know some new city with uh, the next Earthbender avatar or something who, who knows, um, but uh, with Avatar Legends RPG we have Republic City that we are working on now. There are um, I believe you know, three new playbooks that we're going to be supporting there um, and some other fun things in that book. Uh, we do not have a firm release date on that yet. Uh, we're working with Magpie to confirm what that is going to be, and we will share as soon as we have one. On the Marvel Multiverse RPG front, the core rulebook is live and available for you to unlock now. So this is the full game. There was a playtest period that went on for a year. Uh, lots and lots of changes and improvements made to the game. Uh, and the core rulebook, the full game is now available. And the character tools, we are working on those. We are making really solid progress. And actually on that front, I wanted to show you a little bit of a preview of uh, what's going on with the character tools. These are still work in progress, uh, so not 100% uh, done. But, uh, but these are real screens that I'm about to show you. So, um, so you know, first of all, we have our uh, kind of character selection. So in this game, it's really great because you can absolutely create your own hero. So you can go in here uh, or villain, uh, but you can create your own character. And all of that is, is going to be, you, you can click that top button that you're seeing there, and then you can go through the flow of creating your own character. But you can also uh, choose from existing characters. And I want to say that um, there are like 130 plus characters uh, that are available in the core rulebook. So you'll be able to uh, choose those existing characters and um and of course you know i have uh, beast uh highlighted here because beast is my favorite x-man um and uh i don't love everything that they've done with him in the modern modern era but beast is my favorite x-man uh still and so um so with this uh, you can select that character or create your own as you continue to go through the process um, you know, uh, all of the different things that you can fill out, you can work, uh, you know, through your ability scores, all of those things. Of course, we have um, also just, again, just kind of rapid fire here, but, uh, but uh, all of your backstory elements, traits and tags, all of those things you go through, you're able to, to fill out very, very simply, very easily and you can have a character coming out on the other side of that ready to play. So uh, making really, really solid progress on Marvel. I'm gonna move on now to the other, uh, you know, character tools uh, that we are working on right now, which is Vampire. And this is incredibly exciting too. I have wanted 
I remember, uh, you know, I was at a friend's grandmother's house and, um, and, you know, I, I won't get into the whole big story, but the friend's grandmother's house was, um, somewhere, uh, what did, what did they used to call the homework house? I think they called it the homework house or something, but they used to run basically like an after school program out of the house. It was an awesome, awesome house, um, where I grew up. And, um, but, uh, you know, it was long since shut down as being a homework house because we were older. Um, you know, uh, I think, um, I think I was in, yeah, I would have been in, uh, kind of middle school when this happened, but I remember, uh, no, I think barely high school, barely high school. I'm getting older. It's hard for me to remember all these details. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, barely in high school, and I remember playing Vampire the Masquerade for the first time while we were at that place. And uh, and boy, did we feel like we were really risque playing it, um, you know, right at the beginning of high school. Um, and uh, we, we had to hide away from, from parents and prying eyes to play uh, Vampire the Masquerade. But um, I, I loved it. The, the, it, the game and the, the setting and the lore has just such a a vibe to it and uh and so i remember being you know that old and playing for the first time for vampire the masquerade and just remembering how like hey this is so different than these other few games i had played at the time and um and you know how um how how long it took me to pick up on exactly how that worked and um and how to you know fill in all those dots on the character sheet and as we are working on these character tools this is going to be such a simple process it's going to be such an incredible way because world of darkness as a brand has so much recognition out there like so many people know what world of darkness is they know what vampire the masquerade is this is going to be so exciting for our hobby um, because a lot of people know vampire the masquerade from video games and and uh the the various other things that are available for um you know that franchise and so it's going to be so great for our hobby mm -hmm. Uh, if you're a vampire player, a World of Darkness player, to be able to pull people in to potentially, you know, play for the first time. Uh, it's going to be so great if you have played a whole lot to be able to just go in and create a character uh, within a few minutes. You know, obviously the part that we can't uh, really automate is, uh, you know, arguably the most compelling part of Vampire the Masquerade, which is, uh, you know, kind of the story elements and the concept behind your character. Uh, so uh, we can't cut that down from, uh, you know, the five days that I normally think about all of the concept elements of my character and then continue to think about them, you know, every time I play and in between sessions and all of that. So, so we can't do much with uh, your creative thought process there, but we can absolutely make you know, creating the mechanics that represent that concept that you're putting so much thought into, we can absolutely help make that more convenient. And these character tools are going to do that. And we are terribly excited to get these into your hands. And we are making really great progress there. On 5e Nexus, uh, if you missed it, uh, early access mm -hmm. is going to start on September the 5th. So Tuesday, September the 5th, and uh, we're excited about this one too. As a reminder, early access means that um, you know character tools will not be available for that early access launch, but our digital reader and the game compendium, the listings, the primers, all of those things will be available. And we've got a great uh, slate of starting uh, publishers that we're, we're working with here. Cobalt Press, we're gonna have uh, Toma Beast 1 and 2 are going to be available. And then we are also going to be, uh, we're, we're working through the latest updates on the Tales of the Valiant uh, alpha release, but we are going to have something uh, for Tales of the Valiant available. Uh, so we're trying to, uh, you know, 
the, the file is uh, is being updated very frequently. And so we're trying to get the kind of the latest, uh, you know, part of that for Tales of the Valiant. But uh, we are going to have something uh, for Tales of the Valiant for the early access release. And then we're also for Ghostfire, their Grim Hollow setting. We are going to have the monster grimoire from uh, Grim Hollow. And <clears throat> this thing is just packed with all kinds of creatures that you can throw at your players. They are very well thought out. They are very dark and, um, and just honestly scary. And so, um, you know, uh, we are really excited with this early access release. If you are into monsters, we have something for you <laughs> as this early access release happens because between Tome of Beast 1 and 2 and the Ghostfire Grimoire, um, I, I've got to get the final count, I guess, but we're going to have so many monsters uh, that, that you can add to your 5e games if you haven't picked up these book yet, uh, books yet. And then we also have, uh, you know, uh, the SRD will, of course, be available, um, and that will be available fully for free. And then we will have uh, one other partner that we will share a little uh, closer to uh, 9.5 or on 9.5. So we're working out all those details right now, but um, but really looking forward to that early access release for 5e Nexus. We have a new episode of Children of Erte tonight. Um, I, l last week's episode was um, just an exhilarating rush and, um, and I can't wait to see what the, uh, you know, aftermath of everything that happened uh was and uh this group uh of players this cast is really good at aftermath and so uh so i'm looking forward to, to how that plays out mm -hmm. uh and on the character tools uh nothing's really changed here uh these are the things that we are currently focused on and working on this can change um as mm -hmm. um you know certain uh you know other conditions out there as community demand uh, as we continue to review that. Uh, but this is our current path that we're taking with, uh, you know, adding character tools to the various nexuses that we have available for these games. All right, it is time for a giveaway. If that hasn't happened yet. Um, yeah, it hasn't happened, doesn't look like, so that is about to happen though. So good luck to everyone out there. And then I am going to transition two questions. I've got just a few in here at the moment. And um, I will, you know, always, uh, you know, kind of, uh, kind of tease this that I'm gonna, uh, you know, uh, get these done, and then I'm gonna, you know, run off and, and get back to work. Um, that is what I'm gonna do. But if you have questions, go ahead and ask those. And uh, if more come in, I will uh, keep going until we are out of time. So we've got plenty, plenty of time left. If you have the questions, this is a good time to ask them. All right. Uh, the first question, again, is one of my favorites from Risa Malima, current favorite dinosaur. It is, uh, it is kind of a remarkable, um, it's a remarkable thing that uh, I'm trying to think, have we announced? I want to make sure that I am not missing something here. Have we announced the pre-order bonus for, hold on one second. G give, give me a second. The, this, will, this will be pertinent to my answer, uh, but I just want to make sure that I am not spoiling something that I am not supposed to talk about. Um, because I honestly can't remember how much of this we have talked about publicly or not. Let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Mm. Okay. Maybe we haven't. I will keep it a little bit vague, but but still hit on this. So um, for whatever reason, my current favorite dinosaur is still at this stage, the Ankylosaurus. And it has been for for you know possibly a couple of months now so it is it is really staying on top of the charts for a long long time it might be the the biggest tenure since uh you know what i thought was a Ver velociraptor when i saw the first dress part right um so um so yeah ankylosaurus is it and honestly so much so 
that um, we are working on a project here at Demiplane. And I, uh, you know, pushed for the inclusion of an ankylosaurus uh, in this project because uh, I was uh, I was looking forward to uh, you know possibly getting my current favorite dinosaur in there. So so that's what I'm going to go with for now. All right, just a few more here. Calexis 1986. What do you think of the fact DnD Beyond is now opened up with their first third party source book now available for pre order? Do you think that's a reaction to 5e Nexus? Um, yeah, um, I, I don't think I don't think um, I don't think y'all understand how Wizards of the Coast operates, um, and uh, so 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 no, I, I do not in any way think that it is a reaction to 5e Nexus. I think that it is uh, something that they finally that that the the switch finally flipped on after years and years and years of uh, many, many people telling them that that was a good idea. So, um, so I'm, I'm glad that um, I'm glad that they have, uh, you know, de decided that was a good path. Um, I think that uh, it's going to be interesting to see um, based on, uh, you know, some of the, uh, some of the history I have there, it is hard for me to believe that uh, they are going to go much further than than where they currently are, because, you know, I think that Wizards of the Coast has a very um, uh, I, I'm going to I'm going to uh, flatteringly call it a high standard for what uh, gets to touch their game. And um, and so, you know, it would not surprise me if the list of third party products remains very, very small for the foreseeable future. Um, and so, uh, but it, it is great. Uh, love Critical Role, um, our friends at Critical Role and, uh, and I'm very happy for them uh, for, for that inclusion. Uh, and, and definitely, uh, definitely looking forward to see how it develops because I believe that people who are playing all of these games should have the best things uh, and their favorite things available to them. So, uh, so it's 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 good to see that that uh, has uh, that development has happened. Um, and I think that one of the things that I'm excited about for Five E Nexus is, um, you know, we're we're going to have a wonderful slate of publishers that are unlikely to get that opportunity uh, anytime soon. Uh, that that are going to be highlighted and available for you. And, uh, and, and looking forward to players having as many options as you possibly can have out there because that is a wonderful thing for the hobby. All right, Marshall Marshes is Mutineer Zero Character Tools coming after Werewolf and Hunter. Uh, can't confirm that at this point in time. Uh, you know, honestly, we haven't seen much in the way of demand for Mutant. Um, one of the reasons that we initially got uh, the Mutant Nexus up is because it is a year zero uh, engine game and the first and original of that. And so, uh, you know, at some point along our development path, it made sense for us to, uh, to kind of get that original up. And the intent was, you know, to potentially start there and, uh, and kind of, uh, you know, expand out from there when it came to character tools. Uh, I can say that's uh, no longer, you know, our plan at this point because we have seen the Euro, uh, uh Zero engine has has really evolved, and um, and so uh, you know the most popular free league game out there is Alien. That's where we're going to start because we want to try our best to, uh, you know, uh, get relief, um, you know, and convenience out to as many fans as we can. Uh, with each step that we're taking here. And so we're going to start with some of those bigger games. I would love to see Mutant uh, be one of, one of those, but at the moment, um, I, I can't say whether it will be or whether it won't be at this stage. It would not surprise me, given the, uh, the demand that we've seen for uh, Mutant comparatively to some of the other things that we have out there, wouldn't surprise me if it slipped further down that list. So, um, you know, maybe I'm throwing down the gauntlet for all the Mutant Year Zero lovers out there that if uh, you want these character mm -hmm. tools and you want us to make them, then let your voices be heard. Uh, but so far, we haven't heard that chorus 
uh, where we have for some of the other games that we're supporting. And we have for some of the other games that we haven't even told you that we have, um, you know, in our pipeline yet, because we haven't publicly revealed, uh, you know, everything that we have, uh, uh, you know, signed the license for. So, um, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's where we are with Mutant, but that is always subject to change if we see uh, something change with that trajectory. Marshall Marshage, uh, uh, will the legacy content for the Marvel Character Builder be optional, like with a toggle or highlight? Yes, it will be. Um, by the time character tools, um, you know, are uh, shaping up, we will be confirming the plan for that. It is going to be very, very similar to um, how we are, uh, you know, handling this on Pathfinder for the remaster program. The difference for Marvel is that is, um, you know, truly outdated design that doesn't, um, you know, it, it's not the full game. Um, and so uh, this is something that will be, you know, kind of in an archived status as opposed to a legacy status um, like the Pathfinder content will be. Um, and so, um, you know, it will be accessible. You'll still be able to reach the playtest uh, rule book uh, to, to read it and to see the things that you want to see there. Um, but it will not be uh, something that will be uh, available in character tools. Now, if it had been out, um, you know, if character tools had been out a year ago for the game and you made characters using that content, those characters would not lose anything. We're not going to be destructive to characters ever. Um, but, uh, but, but it, you know, in this case, it, it truly is um, designed that Marvel and, and most of the time we take the cue from the publishers on this. And in this case, Marvel doesn't want that to be, um, you know, the game that people are playing. They want the actual full game, which is available in the full rule book to be what is, uh, is played. But yes, uh, it will, it will uh, be something that, again, you're not going to lose access to the playtest rulebook itself if you have unlocked that in the past. Um, but uh, the game will be presented through the tool set by default with, uh, with you know, the current full version of the game. And that's something that you should expect to see in the next uh, you know, couple of months possibly sooner, but but certainly within the next couple of months. Marshall Marshes, do you have a time frame when Demi planes? I can stop you right there and say time frame question's not going to be answered, but let's see what the rest of it is. Uh Demi Planes Marvel Adventure book will come near. Uh yeah, no. Uh we we don't have that uh, information ready to share yet. Um I can tell you that it is actively being worked on and uh it is actively being worked on by uh, Jim Zub and Eric Campbell, and I am um, I am about to start talking to artists um, probably this week. So uh, so it is in production. Um, it's it's going to be great, and uh, you know it, it might or might not have you know an ankylosaurus in it. Um, and so uh, so yeah, very, very much looking forward to what what is happening there. But we are working on it. Um, I would expect it before the end of the year. That, 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 that's what I'll give you at this point. Uh, Kalexis 1986, what dinosaur do you think was a Velociraptor in Jurassic Park? I don't know if we actually saw a true, true Velociraptor in Jurassic Park. What we saw was a Dinicus, uh, f far closer to a Dinicus. Um, uh, at, at least that's what, you know, the, the uh, amateur reading scientific reading I have of it is uh, is that, you know, what was in Jurassic Park was closer to a Dinicus. Um, I have a Dinicus or two on my shelf back here because that's what dino riders used to call it. Um, but uh, Velociraptor sounds cooler. And so I imagine that that's, you know, why they went with that. Um, Milestone 20, when homebrew is added, do you think we'll be able to homebrew classes in 5e Nexus? Mm -hmm. um, I imagine so. Um, I'm going to qualify that with I'm not exactly sure right out of the gate, but our intent is to provide as much flexibility and power as we possibly can. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I think that uh, in my past life, one of the reasons that, you know, uh, core or base classes did not see homebrew support 
was because of the way that the system, um, you know, the, the system was built in a way that uh, kind of made it, you know, more closed than we would like for it to be. Um, what we are putting together here is uh, far more open and flexible. Um, I mean, it has to be because we're supporting the underlying system is supporting uh, what will be um, by next year, dozens of games. Um, and so, um, you know, as, as we're getting into that, we had to have a whole lot of flexibility uh, built underneath things. And so again, uh, Homebrew will come out in iterative stages but um, it absolutely will be something that I, uh, you know, we, we will be offering at some point the ability. And again, you know, uh, it's not class for all games, right? Uh, but you're specifically talking 5e Nexus, um, you know, classes, clans, um, you know, uh, playbooks, uh, any of those kind of things, our homebrew system would support you being able uh, to make your own version at least at uh, some point uh, when we get there. Ketoflex, I've got one more after this, and uh, and I'm already over time, but if you have any more, I'll, I'll give, give a 60-second grace period here while I'm answering these other two. Ketoflex, do you plan on getting more free league titles? Uh, yes. Um, yes, we do. I, um, I have unabashedly shared my love of free league many times, and I will continue to shout it from the rooftops. I think free league is doing incredible work out there and uh, I am a huge fan of, of free league and I uh, and we absolutely will see other titles um, you know past alien and mutant year zero um, and and really excited about that nothing nothing we can talk about quite yet because um, you know honestly for some of them we haven't we haven't specifically determined the ordering of when they're going to come. Um, but, you know, I would expect to see, uh, you know, Vassin, um, I would expect to see, well, I'm going to, I'm going to stop before I get myself in trouble, but yes, we, we are, are, are absolutely getting more free league titles. Uh, Rex Verity, favorite sandwich inside. That is interesting. So this question is, so we're talking about side to go with a sandwich, right? That's what that's what I'm going to assume here, because if we're talking favorite side, then um, just by itself, I'm going to have to go with, you know, uh, Brussels sprouts cooked in, you know, specific ways. But if we are talking about a side that goes with a sandwich, I'm going to say my favorite sandwich is going to be um, something that has buffalo on it so we'll say buffalo chicken so if we're talking meat based it's going to have something buffaloed um so buffalo chicken uh because buffalo sauce is my favorite sauce on, on the planet um i adore it i make really great buffalo sauce um but uh but yeah so uh buffalo chicken um and i eat a sandwich incredibly plain and so it's going to have, uh, you know, plenty, plenty of American cheese on it. Um, I almost always have a uh, an accent or a garnish cheese on there as well. Um, so, it, uh, you know, smoked Wisconsin cheddar is a good choice. Smoked Gouda is another that, that I do a good bit of. Um, and then it is going to have, uh, you know, a variety of different bread types uh, that, that I enjoy. But... Um, but, you know, I am a huge fan of uh, just straight Italian bread. And then it is best when I take my panini press and apply that pressure and, uh, and it comes out as a beautiful uh, panini. That is probably my favorite sandwich. And it is the one that I make myself. Um, I don't actually care for sandwiches typically that you can get out places because I have yet to find a place that can make it as good as I can. Um, and then on a side, it is almost always uh, with a sandwich anyway, going to be uh, chips, uh, something with ridges probably to pick up the incredibly cheap cheese dip that um, is an incredibly nostalgic thing for me that my mother used to buy me when I was, you know, a kid and all these years later is, uh, it is, I don't even think it is real cheese, but whatever it is, it is something that I like. So that, um, in fact, I ate a sandwich 
um, as what I described right there uh, yesterday. So, uh, so I ate that sandwich with those chips and with that, um, you know, uh, not uh, not quite cheese dip um, yesterday. So that is uh, that is probably my favorite when it comes to sandwich. But I do like sandwiches. I like a variety of sandwiches. That that's just my favorite. All right, we're out of questions and out of time. I appreciate everyone for joining me this week, and uh, we are going to be back tonight with another episode of Children of Arte at 6 p.m. Pacific. And uh, so so tune in there. And then I'm trying to think, let's see, what is next week? We're going to be, I'm going to be off uh, traveling, but not next week. So yes, I will see you next week for another dev update. Hope you have a great rest of the week. Later, Gators.